Good morning. Welcome to Santa Cruz Parish. In respect for God in our celebration and all, for all here worshiping, we ask that all cell phones be silenced. Don't leave personal items in the pews. All children must be accompanied by an adult when going to the courtyard or bathroom, and we kindly ask you not to chew gum in church. Today's uh, Mass is being offered for the repose of the soul of Ramon Leon. The entrance song can be found in your missalette, number 239, the prayer of St. Francis. Once again, that's number 239, the prayer of St. Francis. The presider for our Mass is Bishop Kikanas. Please stand. the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And peace be with you. And with your spirit. Good morning to all who are here in our parish church of Santa Cruz and to all those who are watching our celebration on live stream. We come together as God's family, as his people, joined together in song and prayer as we give glory and praise to our God. You know, as I was coming down the aisle this morning, I heard a lady say, I believe it was to her husband, the bishop is here. <laughs> and he looked at her and he said, yeah, I wonder how long this is going to take. <laughs> you know, I, th I think we'll be finished by noon, if not a little before. <laughs> but you know, it is a great joy to be here at Santa Cruz to celebrate this Eucharist with all of you on this 21st Sunday in ordinary time. But we know that when we gather at the altar of the Lord as those washed in the waters of baptism, there is nothing ordinary about what we are about. It's an extraordinary opportunity to join in this holy and divine liturgy with all the saints and angels and all of our loved ones who give praise to God continually in the heavenly kingdom. And so, my sisters and brothers, as we approach the altar of the Lord, we do with humility, knowing that all of us need God's forgiveness, mercy, and grace. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, 
and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to Shebna, master of the palace, I will thrust you from your office and pull you down from your station. On that day, I will summon my servant Eliakim, son of Helkiah. I will clothe him with your robe and gird him with your sash, and give, him, give over to him your authority. He shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. I will place the key of the house of David on Eliakim's shoulder. When he, op when he opens, no one shall shut. When he shuts, no one shall open will fix him like a peg in a sure spot to be a place of honor for his people. The word of the Lord. Please respond. Lord, your love is eternal. Do not forsake the work of your hands. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with all my heart. For you have heard the words of my mouth. In the presence of the angels, I shall sing your praise. I will worship at your holy temple. I will give thanks to your name because of your kindness and your truth. When I called, you answered me. You built up strength within me. The Lord is exalted, yet the lowly he sees and the proud he knows from afar. Your kindness, O Lord, endures forever. Forsake not the work of your hands. Our second reading is a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Oh, the depths of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How inscrutable are his judgments and how unsearchable his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord or who has been his counselor? Or who has given the Lord anything that he may be repaid? For from him and through him and for him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Please stand. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. 
The Lord be with you. Our reading this morning is a reading taken from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi and he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. And I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth, shall be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly ordered his disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. The Gospel of the Lord. You know, Jesus loved to ask questions. In a way, it was his way of teaching. We know that when the apostles were first selected in the Gospel of John, he said to them, what do you seek? What do you want? What do you desire? And here in our gospel today, he asks a question like that that he offered to those first apostles. Who do you say that I am? You know, it's a very important question for us as followers of Christ. Who do you say that I am? You see, the Lord is asking us as he did those early apostles. We know Peter was the one who responded, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. He knew who Christ was. And even then, just after this passage from Matthew's gospel, Jesus tells the apostles, Yes, I am the Christ, but I'm going to suffer and die in Jerusalem. And the one who confessed that he was the Christ said, Lord, that'll never happen to you. And the Lord said to the one he would have as the peg, the rock of his church, get behind me, Satan because I must go to Jerusalem to suffer and die. Who do you say that I am? You know, we know today that many people have left the church. We call them the nuns, N-O-N-E-S. Many young people, many who have been faithful to the church for many years have gone elsewhere they have departed. There was an AD named Annabelle Miller who was curious why it was that people were leaving the church. And she interviewed a lot of people, including a young man who told her that he was baptized 
raised in a Catholic family, went to a Catholic grade school, a Catholic high school, and even a Catholic college. And while in college, one Sunday, he didn't go to church, and he never, ever went back. Annabelle Miller says, faith in Christ for that young man was like an overcoat that he had put on that he just took off and walked away from. You see, he had never really encountered Christ. He had never really met the Lord. Perhaps he would have responded to Christ's question, who do you say that I am? He probably would have responded, I have no idea. I don't even know who you are. You know, it's on when we encounter Christ that we can truly be his disciple. How do we encounter Christ? Obviously, he's not walking among us as he did with those early apostles. So how do we meet Christ? How do we encounter Christ? How do we come to know him? so that like Peter, we can respond, Lord, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. I think there are many ways that we can encounter Christ. First of all, in his word, in the scriptures. You know, for a long time as Catholics, we were told not to read the Bible because it could be dangerous. We might fall into error. But how wrong that was, you know, the Second Vatican Council reminded us, yes, we are people of the word. It's not just for our Protestant brothers and sisters, but as Catholics, we are people of the word because it is in God's word that we can encounter Christ. So one encouragement today is to spend a few minutes every day, if you can, reading God's word especially the Gospels, so that you can encounter Christ, the Son of the living God. Another way we encounter Christ is at this celebration of the Eucharist, this holy and divine liturgy. It's here that Christ himself becomes present on the altar through the words of consecration. It is Christ who we receive when the priest says the body of Christ and we say, Amen so be it. Some people have said that Catholics don't really believe that Christ is present in the Eucharist. It's only a symbol. Well, that's not exactly what we believe as Catholics. We believe that through the consecration, the very body and blood of Christ is present among us. So we can encounter him in the Eucharist. We encounter him in others and the witness of others. I think if I were to ask each one of you, what has strengthened your own faith? You would probably tell me your grandmother, your dad, your mom, perhaps an aunt, perhaps a priest, a sister. It was their witness that encouraged faith to grow in your heart. We encounter Christ in our meeting with others in seeing faith in those around us. And we encounter Christ in works of charity. You know, the Lord said, what you did to the least of my sisters and brothers, you did to me. It's in our care for the migrant. It is in our care for the homeless. It's in our care for those who are sick and struggling that we can encounter Christ we can meet the Christ. So that like Peter, we can respond to the Lord's question, who do you say that I am? You are the Christ, we respond. And what does that mean? We believe that Christ is our healer. He is the one who mends our brokenness, the one we turn to in our struggles. That is who this Christ is, the healer. And he is the teacher, the one who imparts wisdom in our effort to know what matters in life, what makes a difference. And he is 
the Savior, the one who gave his very life on our behalf. And he is the friend who never, never abandons us. And so the Lord puts the question to us this morning, who do you say that I am? My sisters and brothers who gather in prayer today, I invite you to renew the promises that you made when you became a daughter of God, a son of God, washed in the waters of baptism. And so I ask you this morning, do you reject Satan and all his works and all his empty promises? I do. And do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? And do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died, and was buried, who rose from the dead and is seated at the right hand of the Father? And do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? Well, this is our faith. This is the faith of the church, and we are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. And so now with joy and confidence, we turn to our loving God, our Redeemer, our Healer, our Savior, and our friend to offer our needs this day. For our Holy Father, successor to St. Peter and keeper of the keys of the kingdom, that his faith and the inner support of the Heavenly Father may be his strength, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the depth and the riches and the wisdom and the knowledge of God may influence and judge the thoughts of the powerful, moving them to decisions based on justice and respect for life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the weak and the lowly, those who are sick or impoverished and lacking in resources, that through our calling upon the Lord for them, he may build up their strength, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may be challenged by the direct question of Jesus, who do you say that I am? and that our answer may determine our thoughts, our words, and our actions before his face. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the souls of our relatives and friends who have gone before us, and especially Ramon Leon for whom this Mass is offered, that they may all rest in the eternal peace of heaven, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pause for a moment in silence and present to our Heavenly Father the petitions we carry within our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord God. Loving and gracious God, hear these our prayers this day that we offer to you, expressing our needs and hopes. We pray confident that you always hear us when we cry out. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please join us in singing the offertory number 232, Amazing Grace number 232.
pray together, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. Amen. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Here we pause for just a moment in silence to express our own personal thanks to God for calling each of us undeserving as we are to be his very own daughters and sons. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For by your word, you created the world and you govern all things in harmony. You gave us the same word made flesh as mediator and he has spoken your words to us and called us to follow him. He is the way that leads us to you, the truth that sets us free the life that fills us with gladness. Through your Son, you gather women and men whom you made for the glory of your name into one family, redeemed by the blood of the cross and signed with the seal of the Spirit. Therefore, now and for ages unending, with all the angels, we proclaim your glory as with joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts that we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of his saving passion of your Son, 
his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven as we look forward to his second coming. We offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Edward, our Bishop, the order of bishops, and the clergy, and the entire people that you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. And so to our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you in their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. You know, Jesus taught us so many things. He taught us how best to live our lives. He taught us how important is forgiveness of one another, but he also taught us how to pray. And so we pray now as we have been taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the King. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and we extend to one another a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy that, that you should, should enter under my roof, but, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. 
in the body of Christ, bring us to everlasting life. Amen. The communion antiphon is on page 146. The earth is resplit with the fruits of your works, O Lord. You bring forth bread from the earth and wine to cheer the heart. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you.
Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy and graciously perfect and sustain us so that in all things we may please you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Here are some important announcements which may be found in today's bulletin. Please note that there will be a small increase in the price of our candles to reflect increased costs due to inflation. The new price starting September 1st will be $5. Registration for catechism classes have begun. Call the Religious Education Office to make an appointment to register your child. Information regarding class times will be given to you when you call. Classes will begin Saturday, September 9th. We are also registering for adult classes. Please take home a parish bulletin. Thank you. Such a steal, five dollars. That's pretty good. The Lord be with you. And be with your spirit. And may Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon each of you and all of your loved ones and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Our Mass is ended. We go to live out the gospel that we have proclaimed. Thanks be to God. Our final song is Holy God, We Praise Thy Name, number 210. Holy God, we praise Thy name. Holy God.